Hey guys, welcome back. We are at the shop after a long day of traveling yesterday from the races. What in the world is going on? There is definitely a camera crew here for something. I'm not even sure, to be determined. So, working on something else. We'll see. With that said, this is the second to last build video. Yes, this is one and then there'll be one more and then the 55 series is done and over. So you guys, cross it off the list, check it off, it'll be done. So anyways, let's get to it. Last, second to last one. It's gonna be a good one. I am taking over narrating for the day. So here, dad is cutting up the cow. As you'll see, we go ahead and turn the throttle body around. This is how we were able to clear the hood. So uh, he was cutting that so we could flip that around. You'll see that a little later. And uh, here, Adrian's working on trim and I am working on assembling these Maven performance brackets that you'll see here. So these are coil brackets. You'll see them actually mounted in just a second, but they made mounting the MST coils super easy and look super clean. So I was working on that while Adrian was doing trim and dad was working on getting that clearance. Seeing the trim go on, as I mentioned in the last video, was, was exciting. Um, just seeing those little details was a, was a big deal. But here, got the coil brackets going on with the actual coils on them. So I was working on positioning them where they wouldn't be too close to header and I could route wires nice and clean. Dad is working on welding up the cold side of the turbo system, which you'll also see so that way we can get the turbo smart waste gates mounted. I am running more wires, so these are for the MSD Pro 600 box, which go to the coils, so the wires that um, I'll be running later to those coils that you just saw. Dad and I are going back and forth discussing routing because I had to stay out of the way of some of his stuff on the outside, and so I was trying to figure out where to poke the wires through the firewall. If he was here, he'd be a lot funnier. I'm just telling you what's actually happening and what's going on. This is our friend Andy that you see walking around with the camera. So this is, I would tell you details on this, but I actually don't know the details. So our friend Andy came over, he's friends with Ann, Adrian, that's how we met him. And he came over to film a episode for his show that he is currently working on. You see a lot more Andy though, because we ended up hitting it off and we may be working on a new project. Don't actually know the details. I'm not just holding out on you guys to, to make you wonder. I just don't know the details, but you'll see a little more Andy possibly at the track at drag week, race week, and, and stuff like that. So cool guy with a really nice camera. <laughs> so here, this is a lighter day. We still had a little bit of time, so we weren't in panic mode, but I am working on making a new mounting plate for the two injector drivers and the, the uh, oh, the EGT box. So dad already had one injector driver mounted and the EGTs. But as I mentioned in the previous video, we needed to run a second and driver, second injector driver box. So I ended up making the second place. So that way we could fit all of those on nicely. So just going through and making a cardboard template here, lining up the boxes and then making it out of aluminum. I actually think I redid this after this just because I wanted it to fit a little bit different, but same process. Going through cleaning up the edges and then um, heading over here to place them again. Mom's helping me while I center punch so that way I can decide where I wanna put the holes and drilling those. So once we got those mounted, I could move forward, but that was a little bit complicated on as far as finding placement, routing wires, because we actually ran all the harnesses out the back behind it. And we'll go back to live video. All right, a check in on all the things. I was just thinking, you better not put wires out right here. Let me show you. I just realized kind of where your wires are. Yeah. I need to put a, a oil accumulator. So where okay. am I going to transfer those? Well, just make sure your wires don't consume this spot. Oh. They're going to move. But don't put another hole coming out there. But I can put a hole up there. That one's okay. Okay. So checking in. First of all. That is not a GoPro. That's the latest GoPro. Oh, it is? That's the 10 Max. The 10 Max. For comparison, look at, this is like some major size. Yeah, you got a big head. Yeah. <laughs> I got a big head, that's a big camera. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. 
checking out what's going on here. What is going on here? Um, well, you've turned this around. So that way you can make these chips. I was hoping you would explain here. Oh, is that what you're fishing for? Yeah, I'm asking you to do your no, talkage. You, you were just talking. All uh, right, so what I am doing is trying to finish the hot side. Look at downpipe headers. They're complete with the exception of EGT sensor bungs, mm -hmm. O2 sensor bung, and then wastegates. Okay. But it's pretty cool. Everything's working out so nice. The big fatty Turbo Smart. It's going to set right here. And then I'll come out with the exhaust port right here. So it's really, look at that. I mean, it just like lines up. That's nice. That looks good. It just works perfect. Headers. Talking on those while I was gone, you got this side wrapped up rather difficult, so to say, or just time consuming. The headers? Yes. Typical? Difficult. T uh, difficult. Oh, difficult. They are difficult. They shouldn't be. I don't know if it's just because I'm tired. <laughs> they were difficult. This one was really hard to start with because the steering, we actually talked about moving the steering with U joints and making it work better. Well, it turns out the way it was in there worked best. But having to work around it's really hard. We got that in. I thought this side is going to be cake, no steering, right? Right. Problem is the scroll on the exhaust housing. If the scroll was back there, it would have been really easy. But it was up here where that one's at the back, so they're opposite of each other. So that moved the collector even further forward. More, well, it's not further forward. I put it in the same place, but because of that, it made really tight bends. Right. So I used donut. You know, a donut's a stamping. There's two. It was a complete circle, but you can't bend a mandrel as tight as you can make a donut. So I had to use some of these. You got to weld them. They're thick wall, but you know it's time consuming because I have to weld it and then polish it to make it look like the tubing. So that's my scraps of tubing from down pipes and headers. See. But it's done. Dunzo. You in. It's like even the the three and a half inch turning up. Don't look in there too close. You're not bad. It's got a quite a sharp turn, but it's done. And it's that's done. Quick and it works. So nice. So now it's, the, now it's the cold side. Cold side. Cold side should be easier than hot side. Much. Much easier. So you turned throttle body around. Cut the cow just a little bit could you show what it would have looked like and why decided to do that because nick came up with it the other day i hadn't even had time to think about it it wasn't even an issue yet nick was here so nick said what about turning the throttle body around it's not that too said, well yeah that's, that's a good idea but i didn't like it because i was gonna have to cut the cowl and you can see that that's really tight so if it was forward it was just a little bit looser because of the bubble of the hood but i think it'll just basically lay up there i'll probably put velcro and let the hood push down right there but the problem with it was doing it the other way you have to come out of the throttle body turn go back and you know, all these funky turns to go in you can't get the valve covers off very easy this is about What's it called? Serviceability. Serviceability, according to Nick. <laughs> Functionality or... Serviceability. Yeah, that's Nick's words. <laughs> so, but look at the serviceability. <laughs> I mean, you can get to every wall. Direct access. That is a very serviceable system. And it's very system. rare in our life because we never have the luxury of space. So now i got to drill a hole here. And I think all of the coils, which those got mounted today, I have to show you those brackets. They are from Maven Performance, and they're pretty they're neat. Awesome. So they're these. They have different variations, uh, but this is for like a tube chassis or a, where you mount them on a tube, so to say. And it's a bracket, and then they just bolt the coils together. So these are the MSC Smart coils, but they also work with a typical Smart coil from say Holly or somewhere else, and then they also work with CDI ignition coils so um, those are just a longer bolt so anyways these are super nice up there so I got the coils mounted which wasn't that hard but the point is got it mounted and then 
gonna run wires for the coils out the center. So as you can see, the 600 box has that bundle right there. Those go to each coil individually. And then from the coil, there'll be a grounding wire that goes to the corresponding head. So each coil though has a ground wire rather than your typical smart coil, which just has one that goes to the head for all four on that side or bank to bank. So anyways, I'm gonna run those out. And then as well as the injector driver modules, they each have wiring for injectors. So um, since that's stuff that splits evenly, going to run everything like that out the center so you can split it with equal lengths. So do that for the EGTs, both injector driver modules, as well as the coils. to the Holly software there's the help section where it shows all the wiring pin outs and everything you guys are the noisiest fellers <laughs> anyway I'm trying to film you oh my gosh what are you doing nerd I'm trying to show Loretta homegirl quiet on set anyways back to the tech so here is the pin out um, for your J1A, J1B connectors. Those are what you would call fixed outputs, fixed inputs, those are already defined. Right here, you can see that it's uh, B4 on the J1B connector, B14 to B18 are your even cylinders. So two, four, six, and eight, and it shows you the corresponding pin number. And then down here for your odd cylinders, one, three, five, and seven, it shows that it is B21 to B24. So on these wires here, which I was sorting out earlier, they are labeled. These are the ones that come out of the 600 box. And this is coil C. So you can see it marked right there. So what I did while I was setting this up, Nick was helping me with this the other day, but he left. So I kind of had to back, go back and remap and figure it out. So coils, I just listed A through H. So then A is one, B is two, C is three. So these are your cylinder numbers. These are the wiring letters. So letters, I just did what would logically make sense, A1, B2, so on and so forth. So then I came in here using this pin out and listed what pin goes with each of those. So just directly copying that over here. And then just to reiterate, I came over here to the driver and listed what's driver side and what's passenger side. The reason this has check marks by it is because I went through, well actually this was Nick's idea. He did this part. I just went through and verified it earlier. So this is the instruction book for the Pro 600. And there's a couple different ways you can set this up depending on what all you're running. Like if you're running a power grid or something different. So the EFI and LS application, typically you would have a sub harness that comes out of your main harness, which is up here. It's kind of tucked away. Oh, here it is. And you have somewhere here, it says ignition. I believe it's this one, but this one actually, let's see. Whatever the case is, it's one of these plugins. And it has a sub harness. So you have your driver's side and your passenger side. This is like an LS. So you've got your sub harnesses that come off of your main harness. Typically on the 600, if you were doing this with the EFI stuff, the Holly stuff like we're doing, you would just plug these in directly, super easy, just two connectors. It already had that on there. 
we ended up cutting it off because we don't have the right main harness right as a loose term we didn't have the right harness for what we're doing um, and then we didn't have time to wait on the sub harness so we could make it into the right harness but just didn't have time to wait so instead we took this harness right here which these are the pin out that communicate with the ECU so you have these wires that go out to the coils and then these that are following that pin out that come over here into this connector which is the J1B and plug into the Holly. So instead of going through the main harness, Nick had the idea to just plug these in directly here. It actually cleaned stuff up, saved us some time, talked to our friend Ryan at Holly, and uh, he approved this method. So anyways, so that plugs into there and get turned around just like that. So get those wired and then we'll plug this into the CAN bus right here. Then what are you doing? The important stuff. The important stuff. I the mean, ignition's stuff. pretty important too. They're both important. Yeah, but mine's the hard stuff. <laughs> I'm not gonna disagree with that. I'm so sick of headers I could vomit. <laughs> I'm just about to wrap it up. I just put the EGT fittings in this one and put the wastegate fitting on. So check and out the wastegates. Got those added. Look at this side. That looks so good. Now the wastegate. We should have the cold and hot side finished out tonight. What time is it? 11 o'clock by what? 2 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm not leaving until the coils are wired and the, at least one set of the injectors are hopefully wired. I'm leaving as soon as I get this. <laughs> Yeah, but you can close up. Dad said that I've made a career out of my one job today, um, which I kind of did. So, but you know who is making more of a career out of his job is Adrian and the bumper. He had a bumper to mount. <laughs> and he wears pit vipers. <laughs> Bro, these are Z87. These are safety glasses. They're what? They're safety glasses. <laughs> Okay, Whatever. I'll go check in with his, uh, uh, his career. Dad just gives us a lot of crap because he works abnormally, superhumanly fast, and I just can't keep up. We're trying. So, <laughs> We're trying to really. I try to remind him, for every two, three jobs you get done, at least there's two more you don't That's have to I'm do. Saying, for every job you guys eventually get done, there's one less job I have to do. Thank you for the positive well, attitude. With your performance. <laughs> Thanks for the positive <laughs> attitude. We appreciate well, it. I could cut it right now, but I'm going to do this other. Bracket. So walk through on what's been going on here today. So I made brackets for the bumper. That sounds so lame. <laughs> when you put it like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, I did some some CAD. Only <laughs> twelve hours on four Um I don't even have anything to say. I'm going to get We're just saying you would have done it. On you. you would have done it in like an hour max. Yeah, probably. It's like maybe a two hour job. Mm. Two hours. It's okay. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> it's a lot of bending and cutting and trying and at least you gotta write yourself notes so you don't this forget. Way, shithead. No, no, no. Shy feed. That's oh, my middle shy. name. <laughs> okay. Shy feed. You know, every time he looks back up, hey, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> what did he get in the hat? I need you to pop back up over the bar. Hey. What? Pop back up over your bar. I was right there. Even better. Oh, it's just. <laughs> it's, not what I, it's not what I meant. All right, so dad is on the mill here. So as you can see, we have actually a two and a half axis. It's not actually a two three axis in the back, but one of the boards on it was a little messed up, so it's currently off to be worked on it should be back any time now but anyway so he is using this mill and going through it programming it by hand right there 
Um, what he's banking here is bungs for the third set of injectors. It's also showing Andy some of our previous work that we've done, but he has used this machine, used to use it a lot. We just got the other one behind us just a couple years ago, and I do a lot of the computer uh, CAD design and, and things like that and send it to the machine, but he can do this program it here on this machine. He used this one for years and years and years and made some really trick parts, including rocker arms, actually. So just a little bit slower process, but he got these injector bungs made, and then you'll see them uh, welded into the elbow later. Lots of computing. I try not to bug him during this, and I'm sure if he was here actually voicing over, once again, he would probably be funnier. I apologize. I am not that funny. I just tell it like it is. <laughs> we do miss having our CNC up because we used it a lot, but like I said, the board should be back. It had to go for repair. It's not the highest state of the art, but... Uh, it gets us by for what we need. I'd love to have a three axis sometime, um, but we just can't justify it right now because we don't do enough of the work. Or I should say, we don't do enough CNC work to justify a huge payment on it, <laughs> if that, if that make, makes sense. So we do a lot of one-off stuff, but it's not like we do production stuff. So uh, it just doesn't make sense right now. So he gets by with this one. But like I said, I will look forward to when that comes back. If you guys remember Tom Bailey's Nomad that he's announced, you've kind of seen it in the back of some of my videos. Um, after all of these projects are over, I'm actually going to be designing wheels using Fusion 360 um, alongside Dad and Tom. As they give their design inputs, we're going to be designing wheels for his Nomad. So we're using blanks and parts from Billet Specialties, but they did not have time to make the custom wheels that he needed with as far as like bolt pattern and just different design wise so we'll be doing that that'll be upcoming it'll be pretty cool here we are back to wiring and pin out i'm probably on the phone with ryan right there i had to shout him out again because he is a lifesaver as far as just being able to ask quick questions go so looped my sister in and here we are sorting sensors in what their position goes so i kind of laid the car out front middle and rear and then laid the front sensors out front middle sensors in the middle we just had three different piles going on so i could kind of visually break it down so i knew what i was working with but go back out out to the car i think i'm jumping back and forth here gopro didn't time sync i don't think but dad's working on spark plugs building those while spark plug wires while i am still working on routing wires out the front of the car why i'm hanging through the windshield i don't know it made sense at the time <laughs> megan's here she was a good help as far as uh, some assisting goes with also just somebody to talk to it gets lonely when you're stuck in the car wiring but it's okay. I complain about it a lot, but I actually enjoy it. I just would have enjoyed it if we had a little bit more time. Here, Dad is going through and changing rod bearings. So I don't know if you remember in one of the last videos, but we were able to change the main bearings because we had them on the shelf, mm -hmm. did not have them have rod bearings, however. So those delivered from Summit, and then Dad just got at it and changed those. I think it took him about 45 minutes, so wanted to make sure that got done even though there was a lot of other stuff to do to finish the car as far as you know priority this was a pretty big priority so he just stopped what he was doing and, and knocked that out he gets it all cleaned up gets out from under the car and moves on to another job literally as soon as one job was done thanks meg thanks meg she thought that was hilarious uh, <laughs> so as soon as one job was done we just had to jump to another one uh, here I got started on injector harness wiring. So I had a two pre-terminated harnesses and then one that was not terminated. That was per request because on that third set up top, I knew the harness would be so short it didn't make sense to, to get one that um, I would just have to cut up. But these were actually, I believe they were Ford harnesses, so I had to totally undo them and rewire them. And then it has like a Bosch or mini timer, whatever the connection is called on these the set from Holly, but the um, ones from Deechworks, the injectors for this set actually had Sumitomo connectors. I was not familiar with that until this, but different connector styles. So uh, they actually come with pigtails. So not only did I have to switch the harness as far as wiring goes side to side, lengthen and shorten, I also had to go in and add the pigtails. So that was 
interesting. Sumitomo connectors I found out are not my favorite style, so eventually, hopefully, I can switch back over to the, I think it's, I call them Bosch style, but they're actually mini timer, Ryan told me, so. Anyways, here is our friend Andy, newly acquired friend. He is going through and taping the fuzzies in the doors and taping the chrome, so that way Adrian can get ready to paint it. You see him back there in the paint booth, and Andy is here just taping stuff up, lending a hand where he could, and that was super helpful. So back out in the shop, uh, Adrian was cleaning up wiring somewhere in the middle of that down low. He was helping me zip tie it up. Megan's running around with the camera, and Dad and I are just bouncing back and forth on random jobs. But we'll go back to live video now. Well, I am mounting a radiator as we speak, and going to get the fuel system from the meth tank up to the well I don't know what I'm doing to be honest we're waiting on valves and I made the injector the second set of injector third set of injectors last night and I got the throttle cable done so we got the blow-off valves all the cold sides done wastegates are done I still gotta put the drains and the pressure lines on the turbos but it's just wrapping up little things now. So I, we said the other day that we put main bearings in it. So in 45 minutes this morning, I knocked the rod bearings out. They're done. So we're doing, getting ready to do plumbing, which is a lot of work. Adrian's been busting it. So any amount of help that I offer, he counters. This is actually still wet. But look at how that is. It looks a little blue in the picture, but it matches very close. See the rust? So you can rust fiberglass. This is actually a fiberglass piece, all fiberglass, like the bumpers. The uh, rest of it in there is carbon fiber. Adrian's been working on that. Let's go look at the carbon fiber. So I cannot wait to hang this back on the car. But it's ugly. Adrian did a really good job of making it really ugly. So look here. So this is where the dude hung his arm out the window. Look inside. If you can see that, that's carbon fiber instead of rusty steel. So everywhere that he simulated rust, he took it down to the carbon fiber. So it looks really good. Look at that. Fender, the paint's wearing off of the hood. The fender's down to bare metal and rust. Bare carbon fiber in our case. So it's just really patina. I think it's gonna match really well. I'll give you an example of that. This is original patina. And there's our new fake patina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all coming together slowly but surely. Nick gets here, we can start, well, they can finish wiring. That's the big thing. Get all that Holly stuff wired. Alex has been making harnesses for what? Three days, three four days. days. Yeah, three days, I believe. This whole cap is made out of carbon fiber. On a car, it's all steel underneath, right? So then when paint wears off the steel, it rusts. On this, it's never going to rust, but we're going to replicate that. We're going to have carbon fiber show through. I know it's going to be like, bam. Let's see it. Watch out while we're at it. Oh, oh, oh that looks freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to look sweet. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I am just tripping right now. Isn't that crazy? You can't see it until you get it wet. What are you doing, Loretta? I'm going to let Alex come check this out. I really want you to see this. Oh, that looks freaking good. Ooh. I think the main points will be probably in your, yeah, follow the nap. All right, get back to work. I want to watch a YouTube video at lunch. <laughs> I'm going to take this and kind of carry the black and the carbon along this top side. I've been studying some pictures of cars that were rusted out and just basically trying to replicate sun rust and weather worn paint once this has clear coat on it it'll look like this now i got 
I couldn't tell exactly where I was, so I have to stop every now and again and pop it through and look at it. You can see another little spot right there. It's real metal, and we do have some real rust on this car. A bullet hole, looks like the car was shot, so I guess we know that this must be a Memphis car. That's the truth, Andy. I'm finally done with sanding here. Got it in the booth, getting it wiped down. Meg helps me with my camera. Now we're ready to shoot. But listen to the acoustics in this booth. Shoot around these carbon spots. <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this little preview of my video, which is fully detailing how we got this look. All of the different processes that were required to make it look terrible. In all seriousness, I'm very proud of this thing um, until I look at it and then I nitpick it to death and would do a million things differently, but that's just part of it. This was the first time I'd ever done anything like this and it made me want to do more. I've had a bunch of people send me messages asking me how much I would charge to patina their car. And although I'm flattered, it'll never be this cool. It's not just a paint job. It was to recreate all of the years of wear and tear. Thank you to Dennis and Alex and Deb and Meg. I really enjoyed doing this. And if you guys want to get a little more in-depth view of how I got the look and all of the different steps that were involved, with a little more color. There you go. Sorry, I had to do that to you guys. But it means a lot to me if you jumped over to my channel. There's a whole bunch more funny stuff in my video. I keep things pretty lighthearted. Be cool if you checked out my Instagram as well. I like getting DMs. Hearing what you guys are into. I've made a lot of really good friends over Instagram. So holler at me. Let's be friends. I'm Adrian Berry Hill. Literally everywhere. If you're not cool, don't check me out. And Mika just chills. She's the lady of the house. She says, what are these others doing? They just run around and don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> and what are you guys doing? Yes, take a guess. What are you doing? I am losing my... Ever loved, how do you say that? Ever loving mine? Ever loving mine. See, I've lost it. But this is like wiring three cars. Hold, please. So basically, my point is, I've wrapped Meg into this. <laughs> wrapped. Assistant? Mm hmm. Dad is back there doing something. Adrian is doing something. And then Nick is on his way back. He's going to drive 18 hours. It's 9 30. Tonight, um, we have four days after tonight. So basically I came up with a strategy though. If you don't sleep, you double your days. So. But I'm do you double your performance? We don't have time to discuss stuff right now. <laughs> Fuel system came in today. We already have the air motive pumps here and all of that. Waiting on a couple of valves from air motive or waterman, I should say. But the finishing components from Red Horse just arrived. So this is the entire fuel system, hoses and fittings and all of that, that will be both for the race tank and the methanol tank. Uh, then we have for our upper radiator hose, we'll be running a Dash 20 line there like Dad did on the Nova. And then we'll ha also have transmission lines here as well. So this is really nice braided hose. So it's a nylon, black nylon hose. So that's a ton of fittings. Do you remember what you're supposed to do with them? No. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, I know where it goes. I hope I can get it all done. Nice shirt, too. I like that. Really nice fittings. High quality stuff. That's a nice <laughs> fitting. Look how shiny the anodizing is. Holy smokes. Wow, that looks good. It's, got, it's almost got a mirror finish. You can it see. It looks like powder coated paint. That's so nice. Really nice high quality stuff. So this will be going on the car sooner rather than later. So look at it while you can, because it's going to be hidden really, really soon. Okay, and that is it for this video. Like I said, this is the last, well, second to last one. Tomorrow will be the last one, very last one. It's over. It's done. The 55 build series. Check it off your list. I'm checking it off of mine after that. So um, 
I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's almost caught up. It's almost done. So thank you for those that have stuck it out. Like I keep saying, I appreciate you. Uh, about to wrap it up. So that is it for now. I'm going to go back to editing and then I'm going to head straight to the shop and start working on the challenger, which you guys will be seeing shortly. So anyways, have a good day. Be happy. Go fast and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.